The position of an object's origin affects how it moves, scales and rotates. It also determines the origin of an object's global, local and view axes. When we select an object, a yellow dot should appear at its center. This indicates the origin of that object. If the dot does not appear, then we need to click on the viewport overlays icon in the top right corner of the 3D viewport, then select the origins checkbox. There's also a second checkbox, origins all, that allows us to see the origin of all objects in our scene, even those that are not currently selected. Unselected objects have a white dot of their origins. When an object is created, the position of its origin is determined by the center of its bounding box. A bounding box is the smallest box or cuboid which can completely enclose the mesh. We can see that this is the approach used when we look at the origin of a newly created cone. There are several ways of repositioning an object's origin and these options are shown in the 3D Viewport's object menu where we'll find Set Origin. From there we can choose from five options in a submenu. Origin to 3D Cursor is the third of these options and moves the origin of the selected object to match the location of the 3D cursor. Note that the mesh itself does not move. Remember that a mesh's coordinates are determined by the position of its origin. This is nicely demonstrated in the following example. We'll start a new project and then display the sidebar by pressing N. The sidebar's item page gives details of the currently selected object and from here we can see that the cube's location is 000. Next, we'll move the 3D cursor to a new position by holding down the shift key and pressing the mouse's right button. Now we'll select set origins, origin to 3D cursor, and change the cube's origin to the position of the 3D cursor. We can see in the sidebar that the cube now has a new set of coordinates even though the cube's mesh has not changed position. Geometry to origin, moves the mesh so that the origin is again within the mesh. In the last op panel, we can see beside the label, type the option we selected from the submenu, in this case geometry to origin. The center parameter lets us choose how the position of the origin is calculated. The median center uses the average coordinates of all the vertices in the mesh. In the case of the cone, most vertices are in its base, so the origin is positioned very close to the bottom of the cone when this option is selected. Bound center uses the bounding box center to position the origin. Origin to geometry moves the origin to the mesh. Again, in the last ops panel we can select between bound center and median center. Origin to center of mass, surface, calculates the center using the average of points on the surface of the mesh. The last ops panel center parameter has no effect. Origin of center of mass, volume, calculates the center as the point of equilibrium assuming that all parts of the volume have an equal mass. Again, the last ops panel center parameter has no effect. For even greater control over the origin, we can go to the sidebars tool page and check effect only origins. This will cause the local axis of the selected object to appear in the 3D viewport. By pressing the G key to grab the origin, we can then drag it and its associated axis to any position we desire. We can combine dragging the origin with snapping. We covered snapping in the last video. Once we've selected the type of snapping we want, we need to press the G key to grab the origin. Remember we can use snapping without activating the snapping icon by holding down the control key while dragging. If we want to return an object's origin to the world origin, we can do this quickly by pressing Alt-G. Remember to uncheck the Affect Only Origins box before moving on to other tasks.